everyone, it's Jade from Boho Bookworm. I can't believe we are now halfway through the year. COVID-19 has just buggered everything up. This year is a complete write-off, but one thing that hasn't changed is our love of reading. So I decided to do the mid-year freak out book tag today. I obviously with, with this lockdown thing, I haven't been wearing makeup quite as much or putting too much of an effort into my appearance. So I don't look fantastic today, sorry. And also I did have a bit of a black eye. Um, so I'm trying to like, keep makeup off my eye as much as possible, so sorry, you're gonna get a bit of a baggy makeupless slob today. We've got 13 questions to get through, so let's just get right into it. So the first question is, what is the best book that you've read this year so far? Surprisingly, and I have now, halfway through the year, read quite a number of thrillers. I went through a bit of a patch where I was bizarrely reading romance and self-help books more than, than my normal thriller genre and I must say that there's a book by Taylor Jenkins Reid that I just I, I loved so much it blew me away it's called After I Do. So After I Do is about this couple a married couple called Lauren and Ryan and they're just they're not connecting anymore they kind of feel like they're falling out of love with each other and they're just really struggling so they decide to take a year apart to just focus on themselves and oh, this book, I read it in January when I just had my, my breakup and it just came into my life at the most perfect time. It felt like this book was written for me. I was able to relate to Lauren as a character so much. You know, she, she's got to suddenly have a life without, without her husband there to support her and she's all alone. But obviously our situations are a little bit different because, you know, she's got a car and a house She's not living on a sofa, uh, jobless. <laughs> but it was still an amazing book to read and I just I couldn't fault it. I broke down in tears with this one. Absolutely just oh, phenomenal book and I highly recommend it. Taylor Jenkins Reid is a wonderful author. Question number two is what's the best sequel that you've read this year so far? And I haven't read any sequels. I'm not usually much of a series reader anyway, so I can't really answer that one for you. Number three is, what is a new release that you really want to read? And I'm I'm going to be cheeky and do a little self-promo plug here because my novel, my second novel, got published last week, The Pirouette Predator by Jade Lee Wright. And it's, it's currently available in paperback and it is available for pre-order on Kindle as well, which is getting released next week. My book is a very dark, gritty thriller about a serial killer. It's set in a small town and all these dancers are starting to disappear. My main character is a twin and her twin sister is one of the girls that disappeared. So we follow her as she tries to piece everything together and find out what happened to her sister. The book focuses a lot on mental health and I just, oh, I loved writing it and my copy hasn't arrived yet unfortunately, I think it's due to arrive tomorrow and I just cannot wait to hold it in my hands. So if you are looking for a new thriller to read, I highly recommend my book. Naughty I know. The next question is what's the most anticipated new release for the second half of the year? And to be honest, I am so behind on what's coming out. Like, it's, it's terrible really. I've really got to start catching up on my booktube videos and watching you guys more because I have been just so out of whack with this whole lockdown thing and you'd think I'd have more time on my hands now to be able to do all this stuff but it's kind of the opposite because I guess it was because I was finishing up my novel and getting that ready to, to get published. So, hmm, let me think. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. There is an author that I absolutely love from Ireland. Her name is Louise O'Neill. I believe she's got a book coming out in September and it's called After the Silence. And I just, I have loved everything Louise O'Neill has written. So obviously I'm excited for this one. So the premise of this book is there's this girl that's been murdered 10 years ago, but what really happened to her has been kept secret for so long until a bunch of documentary makers start to try and unravel the truth. When this girl was murdered, no one was charged. Apparently, people around the town that she got murdered in do know who's done it, but for some reason they're keeping quiet about it. 
so it sounds like super mysterious and I am I'm really excited for it. Louise O'Neill always just tugs at my heartstrings and I, I'm quite excited because this one does sound a little bit different from her other ones. It's a bit more crimey and thrillery. So yeah, really, really excited for that in September. The next question is the biggest disappointment. And I honestly struggled between two. The, the one is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. I just, this is a book I, I've been wanting to read for so long and I just really thought that it was going to be really philosophical and profound and spiritual. Whereas, to be honest, I just, it, it, I, I was completely thrown off by how fantasy based it was. And it just, it seemed targeted towards a more younger audience than for me, if that makes sense. But I mean, so many people I know think that it's one of the best books they've ever read and it changed their life. And I'm just like, I, I don't get it because it didn't have that effect on me. The other book that was a huge disappointment for me was Con uh, Conviction by Denise Minna. Minna? Um, I, I love the premise of this book. It's all based around this true crime podcast and this woman loves true crime podcasts and then something actually happens. Oh God, I can't even remember. It was just such a bore. And I felt like it was really messy and clunky, like just cluttered with so much stuff and I just couldn't keep up with it. And yeah, I just, mm, it was a Reese Witherspoon book club pick and yeah, it just didn't didn't do it for me, sorry. Next question is, what was the biggest surprise? And again, I think I'm gonna to have to mention After I Do by, by Taylor Jenkins Reid, just because I just, you know, I started reading thrillers and abandoning romance a good couple of years ago when I lost my fiance and stuff. And I kind of just never thought that I'd be interested or, enjoying the romance genre again. I just, I love horror and thriller and true crime, that kind of stuff. So I was really surprised by Taylor Jenkins' read and I really just want to carry on reading everything that she's written. I mean, um, another one that I'd read before after I do was called uh, Maybe in Another Life. And oh, that one, it, again, it, five out of five stars, absolutely loved it. So that kind of leads me on to the um, the next question, which is a new favourite author to you, Taylor Jenkins Reid. <laughs> the next question is, who is your newest fictional crush? A, I don't really get fictional crushes, and B, the men that I I read about in books aren't usually very nice. They usually try and like murder their wife or they're mentally disturbed or there's something really bizarrely wrong with them. So mm, I think it would be a bit weird if I had a crush on someone like that. Right, now the next question I really did enjoy and it's your newest favorite character in a book. And I have to say, Melinda Monroe from, um, from Virgin River, which is written by Robin Carr. I'm actually busy watching the, uh, the show on Netflix as well at the moment. I just, I love Melinda Monroe, I love her story. She's a widower and she just restarts in life, moves to this tiny little town and is trying to make things work for herself. She's this um, nurse and it's just, I like feeling like I can relate to a character. You know, I'm busy restarting my life completely from scratch all over again. Uh, and again, she's, obviously a bit more successful than me and has a place to stay and everything, but it's still, it gives me hope to read about people like that and to just get inspired by them making things work for themselves. So yeah, I, I really do recommend Virgin River again, like a bit of a contemporary romance book and I just love it. I think I'm, my reading tastes are definitely changing. It's a bit worrying. I always thought I'd be a thriller girl forever. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is, what is a book that made you cry? And I'm not going to mention Taylor Jenkins' read again, you guys already know I cried in that one. So I'm going to mention Over the Top by Jonathan Van Ness, who is one of the Fab Five from Queer Eye. Jonathan Van Ness is the queen. I just, I adore him. He is such a kind-hearted, wonderful human being. 
and oh, I, his book was so beautifully written, so deep and personal and just offered so many lessons and had so many messages in it. I just, I, I was listening to it when I was out on a 5k run and I literally halfway through the run just broke down on my knees and just started sobbing, which makes me sound really unstable, but oh, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Yeah, I, I was surprised at how amazing it was and yeah, I, I'll read anything that that guy does. Um, I'm busy binging Queer Eye in Japan at the moment on Netflix because I already just binged the um, the latest, I think it's season five of Queer Eye in, um, on Netflix. So, I mean, the, the Fab Five are just the most wonderful people in the world. All like They just want to help people and they're just selfless and wonderful. But they're also so empowering and uplifting, you know, because they love themselves, but they want, every, you know, a normal person like me or you to learn how to love themselves too. And it's just, oh, it just melts my heart, makes me feel like they can make a difference. Yeah. Next question is, what is a book that made you happy? I'm going to, again, say my book because we're getting to the end here and, you know, Pirouette Predator by J.D. Wright. I think you should definitely buy it. <laughs> but I think it just made me so happy to finish it. I, you know, I never... I've always said I want to write tons of books, but I never really thought it would happen because I just procrastinate so much sometimes and get such bad writer's block. So to be able to like hold it in my hands and stuff like that, like when it arrives tomorrow, I am just probably going to cry. <laughs> then uh, the next question is, what is the most beautiful book that you've bought or received this year so far? So I have received a wonderful gift. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, my lovely Game of Thrones set that my very good friend Dave um, got me for my birthday. Well, no, it wasn't really my birthday, was it? It was way before that. And um, when I first arrived in England, he got me the box set. So that's probably going to be the the series I read for the year, if I can actually ever finish the first Game of Thrones. I'm on like page 500 and something now, so oh, it's a big ass book. Okay, and the last question is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And is there any other answer than all of them. <laughs> I want to read every book in the world, so I'm going to get through as many as I can. I think I'm on 31 books for this year so far, which is a bit slower than I usually do. I normally read non-stop, but, you know, I think because I'm not commuting to work and able to listen to an audiobook and I'm not I, just in general, I'm just not reading as much, but then, I mean, I'm living out of a suitcase uh, I can't buy a lot of books and I hate, I really have this thing where like if I read a book I need to own it so I can put it on a bookshelf and stare at it longingly and remembering the wonderful time I had with the book when I read it. I'm very weird but I think that's why people like me. Anyway yeah so they're the questions. I hope you like them. Let me know if I've uh, inspired you to pick up any of these books and uh, let me know what your favourite book of the year so far is. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.